So Thomas, thank you very much uh, for coming. Calm or concept of resilience has become uh, very popular uh, in Japan, particularly after the terrific disaster in Tohoku. So you are the expert in this field, and so I'd like to ask you about the socio-ecological resilience. What is the concept of socio-ecological resilience? Well, it's grown out of research that's been done over decades uh, where scientists have been interested in, in uh, analyzing resilience of ecological systems. And we've come, I think, uh, a good way in our understanding of what are the components in an ecological system that will make it resilient or how resilience may be eroded. And then in the social science, there's also been an interest in, in stability and resilience in social systems. <clears throat> what we have been trying now to do is to combine the two to see what, what, how could we actually analyze this concept when, when we have interlinked systems of ecosystems and, and social systems where it, in any type of human-dominated landscape. Because uh, the ecologists have been interested in resilience and looking at the feedbacks within ecosystems and the social uh, scientists have been interested in, in, in the interactions and, and feedbacks within the social system. Now we're trying to understand how could this concept be understood in, in human dominated landscapes where humans are impacting ecosystems but also very much dependent so we have very strong interlinkages. And this is more complex and we need um, quite a bit of new tools and methods uh, to understand this better. But we think when, if we get that understanding, we could also produce better guidelines for how to manage resources more sustainably and also how to maintain human well-being even if we have a very uncertain, <coughs> high uncertainty or high variability in, in, in the resource base. And so you know that uh, the United Nations University, in collaboration with the University of Tokyo, uh, has been promoting the Satoyama Initiative, mm -hmm. which is focused on the socio-ecological production landscape, mm -hmm. not only in Japan, but also around the world. Mm -hmm. So how do you think about uh, the possibility of including the concept of resilience in Satoyama Initiative? Uh, those landscapes are really uh, interesting and I think exciting to analyze from this perspective because some of the principles of resilience that you have diversity, that's very true for the Satoyama, you have a diversity of species, you have a diversity of management, diversity of habitats. Uh, other principles like um, connectivity and modularity, <coughs> you have this um, mosaic landscape in the Satoyama which um, have a I think a very interesting connectivity and modularity that, that is that you, you don't have large homogeneous areas with the same crop for example. You have um, small forest areas, you have small dams and you have small areas for crops interlinked with fruit or, or orchards and, and all these um, I think mosaic uh, diversity uh, is one of the main component of building uh, resilience on, on a landscape level. And then, on, then you have people connected to this with, um, with knowledge and with management. And, and so I, I think it's, it's um, the absolute perfect place to start to understand social ecological resilience. So if I would have a choice, uh, I, would, I would actually pick a Satoyama landscape. And, and I think the lessons learned from an analyzing these Satoyama landscapes could be uh, of global relevance. In relation with the Satoyama Initiative, uh, we are trying to apply the concept of a Satoyama uh, in the process of rebuilding the affected areas. Mm. And so mm. in that case, I think it's also very important to include the concept of resilience or how we could establish a resilient society. Mm. This would be a very crucial issue for us to discuss. Mm. So could you a little bit explain about how we could uh, apply the resilience concept in the process of rebuilding the affected areas. I think when, when looking at restoring ecological habitats that again diversity, connectivity, modularity are important um, and so in here it is an opportunity to actually do some experiments of designing different types of restoration and test <coughs> and try to understand how which one of these that would actually contribute more to resilience. But then you also have the, the component of people living in this landscape. And, and then 
I think there's a possibility to also design different types of institutions that could link to these resources. So, for example, uh, you could have a full range of institutions from <coughs> public-owned land to private to uh, introducing new types of commons and see how could uh, an, a range of institutions also add to the, re to the resilience. There's one important component of resilience, uh, which is uh, redundancy. That um, uh, without redundancy, <coughs> you easily f you easily easily fall over uh, a threshold if you exposed to to uh, uh, certain large scale disturbance, for example. And and the redundancy concept, I think, is important both in the ecological. Uh, which has with diversity, related to diversity, but also in the social, that you have um, overlapping institutions and you, you are not s slimming agencies and mani management um, systems um, too much, that there, there's in fact an overlap. So if one is failing, there is another one to, to uh, take that place. So if we go look at these principles, diversity, connectivity, modularity, and redundancy, I think they're all very important. And I think there are lots of exciting um, experiments that can be done when, when in this rebuilding that we, which provide learning lessons for, for the whole, um, whole world. Establishing of a, uh, the resilient society is, seems to be very important. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but uh, not only it is important for the local level, but also it's very important for the global scale. Mm -hmm. So how you could combine the local level uh, strengthening of resilience with the global scale strengthening of the resilience? I think the, the same principles would apply when you go from the local to the global. That <coughs> you need uh, diversity and you need redundancy uh, in also in, in, in the global system. Uh, to uh, to respond and to be able to to rebound and, and um, uh, accommodate large scale disturbances, so I think the the lessons learned on a local could ac actually be of importance um, also on the global scale. Thank you very much.